Hello, everybody, and welcome to Extra Time. These are the stories that did not make it into this week's Game Pitch Podcast. I'm here with JD. Hello, everyone. We are so excited to rapid fire our way through these stories with you. Yeah, these are the stories that we didn't care enough about. No, I'm just kidding. We cared about them, but they just weren't as important. I'm actually sad this first one didn't make it into the show. Moving Out is a game that just launched. It's basically overcooked meets furniture and packing and moving out of your home. It looks incredible and fun. If you're looking for that couch co-op love, this is it. Yeah, this looks like a super fun game. I love Overcooked. Um, I love Team 17, who's publishing this. So I am so excited to buy this and play. One thing I'm not excited to play any more of is Fallout 76, but that is not stopping players from still participating. And the newest DLC content helps them go full-on communist in-game. Look, man, the motherland needs representation. We need... Have you seen some of the things people are making? They are going just straight up red wave. And then competing settlements are like 100% capitalist. Like people are making custom furniture that's like, get over here and buy my shit. It's truly the dystopian future that we deserve. (laughs) I don't think we deserve the dystopian future, but maybe it should be happening in Fallout because that 76 is just not, not where it's at, my friend. It's not. Um, One other thing that's not where it's at is spoiling things. And also, I would say one thing that's not where it's at is Sony's patents. We talked about this on last week's podcast, Uh, but we're going to talk about another weird Sony patent now. They have a new uh, spoiler blocking feature that they have patented to help weed things out. And this is obviously in response to what happened with Naughty Dog and Last of Us 2. Yeah, and so what they define it as a cross-platform spoiler block service. What does that even mean? How much am I going to opt into for them to like sift into my life? Because if your Twitter account's connected, if you're like this, this seems like one of those things where you're just like, "Hey, I gave you the keys to my house," and they just rob you blind of all your Mm -hmm. privacy and your your features and your protection. So I I'm out. I I block this. I block. (laughs) I block them blocking. Oh yeah, I have. I have no desire to participate in whatever form this patent takes. Um, And if it's like some sort of like built in have to have it on the next PlayStation, uh, like I may not be picking up that PlayStation. (laughs) Or uh, doing a, what what do they call it? An air locked or something like an air, oh, air gapped. And I'll never connect my PlayStation to the internet and I'll have a black market free air gapped laptop kind of thing. (laughs) Bring it up. Bring it up. I'm into it. One thing that we are not into on this show is uh, people harassing players in online communities. And that's what exactly happened this week. One of Riot's employees was harassed while playing solo queue in Valorant uh, and shared those uh, images and screenshots on Twitter, to which a ton of Riot uh, executives and employees said, hey, that's not cool. And that was basically it. Uh, And then Riot followed up later after getting pressed for a better response to say like, oh, we're working on some anti-bullying and anti-harassment features. And okay, why wasn't that built in from the beginning? Yeah, kind of weak, kind of limp. And this is what I got to say to just people playing games online. There's no place for this because I've seen like just a lot of female streamers across my Twitter feed just having these same experiences as this employee had. And Man, like just when you're playing games, just call people a dickhead or tell them to F off. Like, just do that. You don't have to be like, get in the kitchen. Like there are people, right. like I've seen the recordings of women playing Valorant and then being like, oh, you should be in the kitchen or, oh, hey, I'm 17, but I'll be 18 soon, babe. You should like, it's just be like. My, be my online girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. Like how are, who is raising these people to be like, this is so, I'm just mad at it. Like it's mad. I, I, I did my fair share of stupid stuff online in like Halo and stuff like that, but it was never like derogatory or towards no sex no like it was all just like f you or like your butthead like (laughs) it was just teabagging it was just the most classic form of griefing that you could possibly have and everyone can do that it's just good old american fun quick old uh, quick side tangent you want to know why i quit playing halo 2 online teabagging no well yes but (laughs) i had been playing with like the same squad of guys and we had got past 45 and that's when your levels in halo 2 became like the the moon the crescent moon oh yeah yeah all that stuff so we were trying and i think we had hit 47 which i think was the crescent moon i can't remember like if it was the moon the crescent moon the whatever it was um but we were trying to get to 50 and like we just got to the people that were just so good that i was just getting dominated and i had to quit but the the factual person that made me quit was this guy because do you remember when uh back in xbox live in the old days like whatever your mic was when you would kill someone it would broadcast what your team chat was to like absolutely yeah it was proximity chat yeah 
Yeah, so proximity chat in the guy who kept wrecking me, like he was hunting me down. And it was, you know, when you're at that high end levels and you're playing at the same times of night every time with the same group, you run into the same people right. uh, a lot. So this this guy, I had maybe played him four or five times, but he would run around and only have the SpongeBob SquarePants theme song <laughs> going in a loop nonstop. <laughs> and so whenever he would kill you, it'd be like, and Boris and you know, and it's like, it's the worst. <laughs> I love it. That's hilarious. He um, knew he had my number, and he I had you. He nailed you. I quit playing competitive Halo Two because of him. So, ah. SpongeBob guy, proximity chat dude, you got me. You've ruined his career. Some other people that are trying to ruin their careers are the speedrunner community for Half Life Alex. So, if you don't know, Half Life Alex is a VR game, and you have to like run around in real life and move your hands and your body. And these speedrunners are like. <laughs> you know, falling on the ground, throwing themselves into buildings or sides and like rolling and doing all these things that could injure themselves in their own home to get a faster time and clip out of things. It's ridiculous if you watch the videos. Yeah, uh, speed running in games where you get to comfortably sit with the mouse and keyboard or controller, cool. In a VR game, I feel like there's some real danger to people that are doing it and potentially people that could be around them. Please, if you were doing this, please, 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 please stay safe. The next story, uh, kind of on the back of that Last of Us 2 um, leak, Last of Us 2 obviously moved back into a June launch, which has delayed Ghost of Tsushima, which is now coming out July 17th. So not a huge delay. Um, and it's, you know, I think it's actually fascinating that they're having these two really big games launch back to back months. Yeah, no, it's, it's crazy that they would be that close to each other. It's always seemed like a bad idea for me, but maybe they're just trying to, you know, shotgun blast everything out to give the PS5 its, you know, due. Well, that's one way to do it, um, and I guess we'll see if it pays off for them. One thing that has paid off is the Coalition mixing it up with different styles of games, and so Gears Tactics is out now, a pretty big departure from the core series of the games, and it's good? Yeah, it has an 81 on Metacritic, which is awesome. Like That's I, I, I didn't, ex I didn't expect it to get that high of a score. And, you know, especially for a franchise doing a new, you know, genre um, and a first foray, that's, it's great. And I hope that there's more Gears tactics in the future and I can't wait for it to come to console. Yeah, I'm super excited. I need to download it on my PC and uh, get playing. And one thing I have no intention of downloading on my PC anytime soon is Valorant. Uh, and it continues to get blasted by people on Twitch. So uh, streamer Summit1G is uh, absolutely roasting Twitch over Valorant streaming numbers and how they are artily, artificially inflated with bots and artificially inflated with people who are watching multiple streams all at once, all in the hunt for a sweet, sweet beta key to play Valorant. It's so terrible. It's just in the bot numbers are dumb. But uh, the it's other stupid. thing is uh, Summit 1G. He's a uh, he's a Colorado guy. He's he's here in the state. He's he's one of us, uh, but he's sponsored by G Fuel and we're not. So we have to move away from him and be uh, basically he's our villain now. He's our arch nemesis. No, 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 no. He can be our ally. We don't have to jump straight to that. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry, Summit. <laughs> I made the call. <laughs> <laughs> uh talking more about the coalition they demonstrated gears of war 5 and how quickly it runs on the xbox series x and it just sounds i mean obviously game that came out two years ago or a year and a half ago or whatever it is now running on a new system should run four times faster or should load four times faster yeah. but it's still cool like it's still nice to be like oh i see yeah it's a nice it's always nice to get this proof of concept versus just the numbers right you can yeah. say this thing loads this much faster but to actually see it in action is cool and it makes sense that they would try to use a very new title in their first party uh lineup to show this and so it's exciting it's it, it's a nice uh little hint of what may be to come in the next generation of games speaking of the next generation pokemon go is planning to add more galarian forms to the pokedex in game this june we've already seen some of the variants of older pokemon uh like zigazoon and some of these others uh get added to the game and it looks like they're gonna add and expand that pokedex even more just in time for summer give me the terrible bearded meowth he's such a horror <laughs> show i can't believe he's not circular and it doesn't go all the way around like it's just so oh. weird that it's like flat yeah give me give me beard mouth give it give him to me i want beard mouth and the other thing that i want <laughs> is that mario <laughs> i'm sorry not mario the, see even <laughs> classic <laughs> oh classic <laughs> luigi situation <laughs> Gonna talk about Luigi. Thought about his brother first. Like a real terrible basic basic. It happens. 
Okay, so Luigi's Mansion has its last DLC coming out, the DLC Part 2. Uh, if you weren't aware, it includes a host of new mini games and uh, new costumes for uh, Mr. <laughs> Luigi himself. I, I've been, I, I kind of admire Nintendo for being like, hey, we built this entire game engine in this game thing. We have these mechanics. Let's just make mini games out of it now. I think, you know, it's like the Banjo Kazooie thing where like, they turned all the Banjo Kazooie or Banjo Tooie mini games into like mini games <laughs> that you could multiplayer play. Like, you know what, Nintendo? Keep doing it. Like, whatever, man. Like, <laughs> did, did I need Luigi Ghost Air Hockey? No, but I guess I'm glad it exists. Do I want to do it while wearing a Cap and Ouija costume? Yeah, I did. So thanks for making that. Dude, have you seen the Captain Ouija costume? It's pretty, uh, it's pretty glorious. And it's, I actually did look it up, and it is yes. <laughs> there's there's this um, Luigi that has like the like I don't he has like a bigger porn stash, and then like this like <laughs> Johnny Bravo hair. It's so good. Like every Luigi costume, I'm I'm into. Like just yeah, if they just want to make a game called Dress Up Luigi, and I just have to like do microtransactions to buy more costumes for him, I'd do it. Yeah, base price $60 plus a uh, $5 add-on cosmetics and uh, coming to the Switch this holiday season. And I think that rounds out the Extra Time segment, right? It does. That is the end. Thank you for watching. This is exclusively on YouTube. I'm Eli. I'm JD. And this has been a little bit extra. <laughs> well, it's been quite extra.